Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this press conference following the Article 50 European Council on Brexit. First, I invite Donald Tusk, the President of the European Council, to take the floor. Thank you, Preben. Good evening. As you know, we devoted today's European Council meeting to Brexit. Prime Minister May repeated her request to extend the Article 50 period until the 30th of June and to approve the so-called Strasbourg Agreement. During the discussion among the EU27, the leaders approached this request in a positive spirit. The European Council decided to approve the Strasbourg Agreement as regards the extension, our decisions envisage two scenarios. In the first scenario, that is, if the withdrawal agreement is passed by the House of Commons next week, the European Council agrees to an extension until the 22nd of May. In the second scenario, that is, if the withdrawal agreement is not approved by the House of Commons next week, the European Council agrees to an extension until the 20th of April. 12th, 12th of April. <laughs> <laughs> While expecting the UK to indicate a way forward. What this means in practice is that until that date, all options will remain open and the cliff edge date will be delayed. The UK government will still have a choice of a deal, no deal, a long extension, or revoking Article 50. The 12th of April is a key date in terms of the UK deciding whether to hold European Parliament elections. If it has now decided to do so by then, the option of a long extension will automatically become impossible. As you know, in accordance with the treaties, any extension must be decided unanimously by the EU27 in agreement with the member state concerned. This is why I met Prime Minister May several times tonight, to make sure that the UK accepts the extension scenarios and I am pleased to confirm that we have reached an agreement on this. Thank you. Thank you. And now the President of the European Commission, Jean-Claude Juncker. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, since that day of the referendum, the position of the 27 member states and the Commission has been united and unequivocal. We have worked tirelessly to negotiate the withdrawal agreement. We have done everything we could to help get it over the finishing line. We were asked for clarifications in December. We gave them. We were asked for assurances in January. We gave them. I was asked for further reassurances last Monday in, in Strasbourg, notably with regard to the backstep. I gave them. And so I have to welcome that today the 27 leaders endorsed the legally binding clarification and assurances that Prime Minister May and uh, I agreed in Strasbourg. This closes and completes the full package. There is no more than we can have. We are hopeful that uh, the agreement will be adopted by the House of uh, Commons. Uh, Mesdames et Messieurs, quoi qu'il arrive, nous sommes prêts pour toutes les éventualités, y compris l'absence d'un accord sur le Brexit, un no deal. Nous nous y sommes préparés depuis 2017, car gouverner, c'est prévoir. Enfin, on le dit toujours, mais cette fois-ci, c'était vrai. Les mesures d'urgence sont en place et nos préparations continuent. Nous avons adopté 19 propositions législatives pour faire face aux problèmes majeurs que créerait un Brexit dur, notamment en ce qui concerne les citoyens, les connexions aériennes et routières et le secteur de la pêche. 
des équipes de la Commission se sont rendues dans toutes les capitales pour discuter des préparations nationales et des plans d'urgence. Meine Damen und Herren, wir sind am Ende einer langen Strecke angekommen. Aber wir müssen jetzt den Blick in die Zukunft richten. Die Uhr tickt nicht nur beim Brexit, die Uhr tickt auch in anderen Räumen. Wir können nicht warten, bis Brexit vorbei ist, um die Dinge zu liefern, die wir den Europäern versprochen haben. 321 Gesetzesvorschläge wurden seit Amtsantritt dieser Kommission vom Europäischen Parlament und vom Rat angenommen. Dieses Tempo müssen wir jetzt bis zur Europawahl durchhalten. Morgen besprechen wir unsere Beziehungen zu China, besprechen die Industriepolitik der Europäischen Union und unsere Wettbewerbsfähigkeit. Dies sind wegweisende Themen für die europäische Zukunft und für die sind wir zuständig. Vielen Dank. Thank you very much. I now open the floor for a few questions. So we start right here, please. Um, hello, it's James Chris from the Daily Telegraph. Um, it's a question for both presidents, please. How long is a long extension, please? Do you have an idea? <laughs> Until the very end. Gavin Lee at the BBC. A question again for both presidents. First of all, can you describe the atmosphere in the room? My understanding is that Theresa May was actually prepared and surprisingly to some for no deal, if that becomes a scenario, almost backing away to say if it, if it is no deal, that's where it goes. And also, do you feel that there's a big risk of just kicking the can down the road now? The atmosphere was uh, much better than I expected, and, and for sure better than, for example, in December. No, not only because of the weather, but also because of the mood. And, but uh, frankly speaking, it's, uh, our mood is not the most important thing here. It's, uh, our discussion was really, really constructive. and. And uh, I can only reconfirm that uh, what I felt not only today, but also before, it's a uh, goodwill and determination. You know, we, I know that all of us are aware how objectively how difficult the situation is. And the fact that we, that we are still able to find, a, not the final solution, of course, not, but but the way to, to, to at least to ease the process for, for both sides. I think it's, it was very, very tangible and visible. It's, uh, I'm really satisfied, especially that we, that we have still open so many options. And uh, um, it means that you know what is my personal view on this, and I'm really satisfied. And I think it's a, a good sign because, frankly speaking, I was really sad for that, our meeting, and now I am much more optimistic. Also, the Stimmung war gut, and I have been in so old to wait and wait to see how long my Thank you. We'll take one last question. Yes, please. Catherine Fior, sure. EU reporter. Uh, President, um, President Tusk, you said a while ago uh, that there was a special place in hell for those who promoted Brexit without a plan. Well, with withdrawal agreement is part of a plan. If uh, British MPs don't vote for it next week, do you think that special place in hell should be enlarged to <laughs> include more members of uh, the House of Commons? And since May's speech last night, more than two million people have signed a petition uh, to support the revocation of Article 50. Would you welcome uh, this? Thank you. 
according to, to our Pope, the hell is still empty, you know, and uh, it means that, 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 that a lot of space as well. <laughs> I think this is the right moment to conclude the press conference. Thank you very much. Don't go to hell.